So, uh, so anyway, the cop says, I, I could throw the book at you for a stunt like that, mister. And I, I told, oh, is that on? Oh, okay. Cut that part. All right. Okay, here we go. So I need to tell you about <coughs> um, charge. Charge and uh, positive, negative charge and potential difference, also called voltage difference. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but, uh, well, let me, let's draw something here. I'll draw an atom. So, here we got an atom. That's my uh, nucleus. And uh, you may have learned about this. Around the nucleus are electrons, and the electrons, well, they tend to orbit about the nucleus. So I've got my electrons orbiting about the nucleus. I've got a negative charge, and I've got protons in the middle. They have a positive charge. And the, the number of protons uh, in the nucleus, that tells you what the atom is. One proton means uh, you've got hydrogen. Two protons means you've got uh, helium. Three is lithium, et cetera. Carbon's got six protons. Uh, sometimes the protons, well, often they also have things called neutrons in them, but the neutrons don't have any charge. The electrons, they've got an equal and opposite charge to that of the protons, and they balance out. So for a neutral atom, a neutral atom has to have just as many electrons as protons. If it's missing an electron, the atom will have a positive charge. If it's got an extra electron, uh, the atom has a negative charge. I don't know if you know this, let me tell you. Like charges, say I've got two electrons here. Like charges repel. They'll push away from each other. It'd be better if I did it like this. So two charges of the same of the same charge, the same sign, they'll push away from each other. The same with two protons. If I have two protons, they'll push away from each other. And opposites attract. So if I've got an electron, a negative charge, and a positive charge, they'll go toward each other. They'll attract. Now, an electron is about 2,000 times less massive than a proton. And most atoms are much bigger than a proton. Like I said, carbon has six protons and six neutrons. It's like 12, so it's, it's like almost 25,000 almost 25, times the mass of an electron. So the things that move aren't going to be the, the atoms. They're going to be the electrons. And in, a, uh, in an electrical circuit, what moves are electrons. Conductors are materials that allow the electrons to move freely. So, uh, so metals are great conductors. Uh, for the metals, it's almost like it's hard to tell who owns the electron. They, they flow around so easily. Um, they flow around so easily, it's uh, the same reason that metals are good conductors of electricity. They're also good conductors of heat because the electrons carry that heat too. Now, you should be able to do work with that or something, and you can. So here's what you do. You separate charges. Mostly you have charges balanced off. You know, you got, a, you got positive charges, negative charges. Uh, they pull together, right? Opposites attract, and so they neutralize each other out. So generally speaking, all the air around here is neutral. If you want to make use of this, you need to separate the charges. And you can separate the charges a few different ways. You can use a motor, uh, like in a hydroelectric dam, you can use a turbine to separate the charges. Uh, you can use uh, power supplies, or you can use a battery. And the battery uses chemicals to separate the charge. We'll draw a battery. So a battery, let's see. Well, let me draw a picture of a battery first. There is like one of those big six volt batteries. There's one, two posts. Now, let's say this post is the negative post. That's called the anode. Excuse me, that's called the cathode. I'll get this right. That's why I have to keep taking this class cathode. 
And the other side, that's the positive side. That's the anode. Now what they've done is there's, there are chemicals inside the battery and it separates the negative charges from the positive charges. So this cathode, it's got a whole bunch of negative charges sitting on that post, waiting to get away from each other. They can't stand each other, but they cannot get across to the anode because there's air in between, and air is a great insulator. It prevents the mo motion of electrons. The anode, it's missing electrons, so it's positively charged. If these guys could get together, boy, they would move from cathode to anode. If you try this, and don't try it on any of my batteries, but if you stuck a wire from the cathode to the anode, then charges would move very rapidly from one side to the other. Matter of fact, they'd move so rapidly, they'd burn the wire up. They'd heat it up considerably, and then they'd melt it. So that doesn't work. Now, let me show you a schematic. A schematic is a visual way of representing these. So here we go. We got. Um, Let's see, a battery. And a battery is given by this. Now this is a direct current. That means the electrons are always moving in the same direction. DC. Here's my pos positive side, the big side. Here's my negative side. So notice I've got a short, I've got a short on the negative, short uh, arrow, long, uh, short line, long line, short line, long line. That's my positive side, my anode. Cathode, anode. Now I'll draw a circuit, I'll draw a line that represents a conductor. I'll put a switch in. And a switch, that just doesn't mean the switch is open, it just means that there's a switch there. And I need to put a load in there, something for the electrons to move through to do some kind of work. So I'm going to draw a light bulb. And this is a light bulb. There's my light bulb. So what I have is a complete circuit. Now, once again, this doesn't mean the circuit's open. It just means there's a switch there. Now, as soon as I close this switch, all of a sudden, these electrons here, they're just sitting there. They hate each other. Now they can get away from each other. And they're going to head along through here. They're going to run through this light bulb, go through the light bulb, and head over to the positive side, because once that circuit's closed, they can feel that anode. And that's how an electric circuit works. The reason the light bulb lights up, an incandescent bulb, is that these electrons move through so fast, and this wire is so thin that it heats up the wire. Just the friction of running through it heats up the wire and causes it to glow. Now, another way I could cause that light bulb to glow is what's called, this is a direct current, DC. Another way I can get that light, light bulb to glow is with an AC circuit. With an AC circuit, I'm going to have the electrons, instead of just going in one direction, they're going to slosh back and forth. Now the power supply looks like this. We won't use this much, but that's the AC power supply, a circle with a wave in, in between there. The rest of it looks the same. Now the electrons, they're going both ways. They're sloshing back and forth. 60 times a second in the United States, 50 times a second in Europe. And as they do that, as they slosh back and forth, they still create the same kind of friction, still lights up the light bulb. But let's focus on the DC. With the DC, I can put the batteries, I can connect them in different ways. I can use more than one battery. Now, the more electrons I have here, the more they're going to hate being together, and the faster they're going to move through here, the more energy they're going to expend. The fewer electrons I have here, uh, the faster these electrons are going to be drawn toward the anode. So the bigger the charge difference, the faster the electrons will move. And we call that 